welcome back to some downrange gaming son <coughs> excuse me oh all right you ready yo what's up welcome back and i left you guys last week when i was talking about my deployment to kuwait and if you guys didn't know this is my downrange gaming channel video game channel where i talk about my military experience in the united states air force i try to do them every monday but as you can see today is tuesday i'm terribly sorry for all you drgers does that even make sense can we call you guys that drgers um that i didn't get a video up and check this out it's got a little little three kills right here double kill boom get another kill reload my little clippy clip run up here oh you want some too but ow get a little four point and that's like the only good kill streak i had in the game and as you can see i'm playing some kill confirmed so all the campers can suck it because i like this because you can't really camp that much unless you don't care about collecting dog tags so, like I was saying, I left you guys last time I was on my deployment. Oh, before I get into the stories, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the favorite button. It helps so much. So, I just want to thank you for being so dope fresh for doing that. And let's move along. So, all right, I was talking about me being deployed to Kuwait, how I had the greatest job, which was being in armor, not being stuck on a gate or doing some crazy thing outside, which it was really hot in Kuwait. But I got lucky. The rest of my squad that I deployed with was really pissed at me. Anyways. So, I did volunteer on my days off to go off base and do some cool stuff. Well, I told you last week that we were staying in like a 30-man tent for the first couple weeks. We were there. And then we eventually got moved to our permanent tents. Not only was there tents, but there was also like these trailer type things that were a little nicer than the tents. Well, a little actually a lot nicer than the tents like some guys stayed in tents the whole time they were out there whole seven months eight months we were out there i got lucky i was a little higher ranking so i got to stay in a trailer air conditioned the tents had air conditioned too like really good air air conditioned and but the only bad thing about my trailer was it was the very last one to the closest to the bathroom so i had to walk like a good quarter mile just to use the bathroom which sucked because I used to work out a lot out there. When I, and I usually worked out after work, which I worked during the day. And then at night, I'd work out and then I would go to bed. And I would drink a lot of water when I was working out. So I would go back, shower, and then go to bed. You know, and I had to walk that distance apart. It sucked. But in the middle of the night, I always had to pee. And this was something that everybody did out there. Um, this is kind of gross, but it's funny. So in the middle of the night, I had to piss. So, like, at one point, I was just sneaking behind the trailer that we stayed in to just use the bathroom. But there's cameras everywhere on the base, like infrared cameras for security reasons. And, like, it's very unsanitary to sit there and piss behind, you know, your thing. It's in the desert. It's not much rain. So that was something that was frowned upon. I only did, like, once or twice. And then I was like, you know what? It started smelling like piss back there because I think other people were doing it. And, you know, we had, we, we would talk, talked amongst ourselves in our trailer, like, look, stop pissing behind the trailer. It's starting to stink. We're probably going to get in trouble. So we all started pissing in bottles. Like we would have water bottles and we'd pee in them. We had our little section so someone, no one could see us doing it. But we'd fill these bottles up, you know, and I would put them under my bed and then I would take them to the dumpster in the morning. But I was starting to get lazy and I, and this is gross, but everyone did it out there. Like I, I probably had like four or five piss bottles under my bed at one point. And it was heavy. Like they're heavy to carry. So I had to get rid of those. But a lot of dumbass people were pissing in the bottles and throwing them underneath their trailers. And then like there would be like a hundred piss bottles under there. And they're like, what the fuck? So pissing in bottles. And it's funny because you would hear the person pissing in the bottle. Like it'd be pitch black in the trailer. And all you hear is Psss, like someone pissing in a bottle because they don't want to walk that far. Walk to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And you could pretty much ask any person that was in the service that was deployed if they know what a piss bottle is, and they will tell you a funny story about it. So enough about piss bottles. Let's move on about my deployment out there. Now, just to let you guys know, I didn't see any action out there. So if you're sitting here waiting for me to talk about me killing somebody or someone getting killed, it's probably, it definitely not have any stories like that. I'm sorry. And I'm happy I don't because that stuff is very unfortunate. And sometimes, like, or all the time when people... Tell me, like, thank you for my service in the military. 
And sometimes I just think in my head, like I don't say it, but I'm like, man, you got you shouldn't be thinking me. There's guys out there that have limbs missing, their life is ruined from stress, and you know those are the guys that really need the thanking. But anyways, moving along. I was out there during the Iraqi war, and if you know where Kuwait is, it's right on the border of Iraq. Kuwait's a nice place. It's really nice. They have a nice like cities. It's very built up. I I think if I'm not mistaken, because I have no, I know I have a lot of viewers that are from Kuwait, and I don't know if this is true or not, but this is what I was told when I was out there. Like if you are a 100% Kuwaiti uh, person, like you're from Kuwait and all that, born Kuwait, I forget the rules, but you actually get paid like a whole like people rage quitting because I'm just we're just whooping people's asses. But what I was saying about the Kuwaitis, you actually get paid, I guess, by the government, like a big amount of money just to be a citizen because there's, they make so much money from oil that they could just give it to their people. So I don't know, somebody from Kuwait, please shed some light on it in the comments and let me know how that really goes down. I'm curious to know the truth about it. I remember the rumor was like they get $250,000, well, not dollars, but Kuwaiti money equivalent to dollars a year just to vote and be a Kuwaiti. Like, that's freaking crazy. So let me know in the comments on how that works. So the base that I was stationed at, I don't think I told you guys, was called Ali Asalim or Ali Asalam. I don't know the correct way of saying it, but we called it the Rock. And it was a, it's an Air Force base, and it was to, attached to a Kuwaiti military base. And I went on the Kuwaiti side a couple of times, you know, for stuff I had to do. And there is a wall and a tree that is really spooky and freaky looking. And there's a lot of Kuwaiti people are probably going to, I don't know if you guys would be offended when I talk about this, but the wall had a lot of blood on it. And the blood was left from Desert Storm. I don't know if you guys remember Desert Storm is when Saddam and Iraq invaded Kuwait and took over Kuwait, you know, and America came in and pushed Iraq back out of Kuwait. So back in Desert Storm times, they they um, took over this base. Iraqis took over the base, and they lined up all the, the colonels and higher-ups on that base against this wall and shot them and executed them on this wall. The blood's still on the wall and hung the base commander from the tree. That's the rumor that I got when I was out there. I don't know how true it is, but there was blood on the wall. It's pretty, and a tree is there, and it's pretty freaky looking. But I just thought that was very, I should have took a picture of it and all while I was out there, but maybe it would have been disrespectful. So I'm going to tell you guys about Desert Queens. How many people know what a Desert Queen is? Raise your hand. Okay. So none of you guys do, because I can't see in the comments. So <laughs> a Desert Queen is basically American woman that's in the military. So she's deployed with us. And she's ugly, like really ugly, except when you get deployed, for some reason, she gets really hot. And this is so true. Like all the ugly girls start becoming better and better looking while you're deployed because there's no girls out there and you're going crazy. And we would call those girls desert queens because basically, I don't want to say, I mean, not all the girls were like this, but a lot of girls became very slutty when they got out there because there were so many guys that wanted to hook up with girls and they probably never got that kind of attention before because they're not very attractive and they get out there and they just run everything. I remember this one desert queen, not going to say no names, but she slept with everybody. And it was kind of funny. This one situation happened and a desert queen name was on the bathroom stall in the in the, uh, one of the bathrooms, her name. And somebody you sat there and wrote every person that slept with her on the wall, like her name, and then like a couple other Desert Queens and all the people she slept with. And it was true. Like it was a true thing. Like people, and it's so funny because that's how bored we are. We all, that like that's what we talk about. Like, yo, did you see in the stall the names that that Desert Queen, I'm not going to say her name, is slept with? And then it would be like some names like, oh, snap. And then like, some of the names were like higher ups, like, you know, like high ranking, like they shouldn't be doing that, but they're out there doing that. And I remember for some reason, like two days later, the things painted. Once it spread, the wall got painted and uh, stuff goes on out in the desert that you don't usually talk about when you get back to your regular base. And I didn't mention to you guys that 
you know, Kuwait is a Muslim country and pornography is very forbidden there. Like you cannot have any kind of pornography in that country. It's against the law, I believe. But so for military soldiers, you know, you couldn't bring any magazines, any videos, any porn, nothing. They searched everything to make sure you didn't bring anything. If you did, you know, you get in huge trouble. So we didn't have any of that stuff out there either. So you know how crazy it got, especially with the desert queens running around. And it was funny because, you know, people snuck stuff in. So when I got to my trailer, it had a, there was a TV in there and it had a VCR built onto the TV. So I get out there and I hit eject on the VCR and there's a video, I think it was like Top Gun, you know, the movie Top Gun. So now when we watch Top Gun, I hit play, it's a porno. Someone dubbed over Top Gun a porno, which was smart. Like it was very, you couldn't even know. So I just threw it out because I didn't want to risk getting in trouble. So that's going to be it for uh, my Downrange Gaming video today. Look at this dude. That's what he gets for rocking a Kimbo with those guns, noob. So thanks for watching. Peace on the streets. I'll see you guys next week.